was sort of Wall Street warming up to Bitcoin. Um, and what we're seeing, that it, it's just another extension of the establishment cozying up to Bitcoin, I guess. So I guess you could frame, uh, you know, Larry Fink's about face uh, and and all of that um, as sort of the private sector establishment turnaround. And this is sort of the public sector establishment turnaround. Um, but as far as it relates to financial freedom, I don't think the policies um, expressed by, uh, you know, Trump, or at least what Trump expressed or hinted at in his speech, because he didn't, you know, as far as RFKs went, he was more deliberate about what his policies specific. Yeah. Um, and Trump was a little more vague, but based on what, you know, Trump said, talking about sort of yoking Bitcoin and the dollar together and using that to expand the dollar's power and hegemony globally, and then also bringing in stable coins, which of course would be in this case dollar denominated stable coins into the play. Uh, we have to uh, consider what that means if the reason we're voting for it is to ensure that Bitcoin will be used to propagate financial freedom globally. Whitney Webb is sounding the alarm. Listen, as we really look at what's been happening around crypto, around Bitcoin, around stablecoins, it's all to manufacture complete control. And in this video, I really want to talk more about this and really kind of warn you all on how to prepare accordingly. Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. For those that are new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you do become a subscriber. So as we do here, Whitney Webb talking about stablecoins, talking about Bitcoin, talking about CBDCs and control, a lot of people have now really kind of come to the conclusion that, all right, well, the US is not getting a CBDC. And that is because of this bill that passed back in May, where it basically banned the Federal Reserve from issuing a CBDC. Now, if you actually read the bill, it's, it's not really banning a CBDC. It's banning the term CBDC. So the Fed is not going to issue a central bank digital currency, but they can issue a digital dollar stablecoin, for an example. But this is where everyone is completely missing the target. A CBDC and a stablecoin is essentially the same exact thing. They both have programmability tied to them. The only difference is the issuer. But what if BlackRock already has a US CBDC planned? I actually want to go all the way back to this post here from April 11th, and this was on January 12th in an interview on CNBC Squawk Box, BlackRock chairman and CEO Larry Fink made a bold statement about the future of money in the United States. He predicted that the country will adopt a digital currency using blockchain technology. This comment reinforced his support for a federally backed central bank digital currency, which he originally expressed in a 2022 letter to BlackRock shareholders. So Larry Fink literally supports CBDCs, and he's now predicting that the country will adopt a digital currency. Now, remember that BlackRock and Larry Fink actually have a hand in fiscal policy in the U.S. and control a very big percentage of what we see around fiscal policy as well. That's why you don't become as big as BlackRock without having significant control over almost everything, including fiscal policy. But also over here, we have breaking. BlackRock now owns 370,000 Bitcoin, nearly 2% of the total Bitcoin supply. Now, everyone is getting very bullish about this because, again, this is BlackRock, the biggest asset management company out there. They're embracing Bitcoin. This means that crypto is about to be massively adopted and it's going to surge Bitcoin to you know, all time highs and it's going to make everyone in crypto rich, right? Think logically about this, OK? I just talked to you guys about CBDCs. I just talked to you guys about this ban on CBDCs, which will ultimately introduce stable coins. We're going to get a U.S. stable coin that is probably going to be issued out by the Fed um, and everyone's going to be happy about it because it's not a CBDC. And just like Whitney Webb is saying, right, you have Trump that's pushing a stable coin. Kamala Harris is probably not going to push a CBDC because of this bill. So either way, they're most likely going to push a stable coin. Now, how does BlackRock fit into all of this? Well, BlackRock has a hand in stable coins already. For an example, back in April of this year, USDC Circle powers near instant 24 seven transfers at the speed of the internet. And if we actually look at this, we could see that Circle announced 
that a new smart contract functionality that would allow holders of the BlackRock USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund to transfer their shares to Circle for USDC. This provides investors with a near instant 24-7 Biddle, B-U-I-D-L, right, off-ramp that brings to bear the core benefits of tokenized assets, speed, transparency, and efficiency. Now, check this out from Mr. Man XRP, Jeremy Allaire, Circle, USDC, your C, BlackRock custodies 90% of Circle's reserves. Check this out. The second is that there are regulations that stipulate the kinds of reserves we can hold. Because we choose to be regulated, we hold these reserves in the safest possible instruments. This is as close as you get to government-backed or government uh, 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 debt money. The Circle Reserve Fund, which is a fund that is issued and managed by BlackRock, the world's asset manager, holds almost 90% of the reserves. These are held either directly in short-term U.S. government bonds or in overnight uh, repurchase agreements over collateralized by U.S. government bonds. So the 85 plus percent is this sort of U.S. government backed risk. The remaining in this case, I don't know if this is perfectly up to date, 5 billion in cash is almost entirely held with multiple global systemically important banks. And these are the banks that effectively have been designated to have the full support of the governments that back them. So this is an incredibly safe infrastructure and the most transparent in the world. And I'm not just talking about in the stablecoin market. We believe that we are more transparent than any financial institution ever. We provide daily visibility into substantially all of these reserves through USDXX, search it on Google. You can see the daily every single security instrument that backs USDC. So Circle is essentially BlackRock at this point because of 90% of their reserves being custodied by BlackRock. Now also, let's go back to 2022. Circle raises $400 million as BlackRock explores USDC. BlackRock and Fidelity headline the stablecoin issuer's latest funding round, which follows a $440 million raise last May. So BlackRock and Fidelity pushed $200 million each essentially into Circle. Huh, very interesting at the same exact time that we're now hearing talks about banning a CBDC and introducing a stablecoin for the United States. Also, BlackRock creates fund with Securitize a big player in RWA tokenization. And when you actually look at this, we could you know, come down here, and uh, we have observers pointed to blockchain data showing $100 million of Circle's USDC stablecoin on the Ethereum network was moved to an address related to a securitized deployer, which could potentially be a seed investment into the fund, Through that, though that's not certain. But we actually now have confirmation that Circle is a part of this, and uh, they are the ones that are actually enabling this. And also remember that circle, oh, you got to love this. They're tied right back to the World Economic Forum. And by the way, this was back in January of 2023. And if we actually scroll down, we can see that Jeremy Allaire, Innovation Built to Last, a fireside chat with Circle's Jeremy Allaire and BlackRock's Rob Goldstein, the COO at BlackRock. Hmm, very interesting. And this was at the World Economic Forum 2023 agenda meeting. And I'm going to play this clip real quick from Whitney Webb. Listen closely to this. Tokens, right, at the end of the day and have that programmability functionality and some, you know, stablecoin issuers that are prominent, like Circle, uh, openly talk about the programmability aspects of their stablecoin. And, you know, they're in a very uh, deep uh, alliance with BlackRock Circle particularly, and Tether itself um, has made an alliance with the FBI and the Secret Service and, you know, other aspects of the U.S. government to freeze wallets at the behest of the U.S. government, thereby making Tether uh, sort of a a soft extension of of U.S. foreign and fiscal policy abroad as it relates to sanctions and other things. Uh, some of which the U.S., of course, in the past has used to facilitate regime change operations and other things, not necessarily stop terrorism, um, as they are inclined to say. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, 
And, you know, if you're allowing intelligence agencies with the FBI technically is, you know, to be onboarded onto your stable coin, you know, it's really not a private sector thing. It's a public private partnership. Um, and public private partnership is the model that the U.S. and really most of the world essentially uh, uh, favors. And so, you know, I think these uh, stable coins offer that same kind of threat to financial freedom um, or, you know, easily could um, uh, were things to uh develop that way and so you know if programmability and surveillability is the threat to financial freedom um then we should uh not support that right um and this is exactly what i mean right you have blackrock which has a massive hand to play in the success of circle and by the way ties right back to the world economic forum which is also pushing for cbdc's for a digital economy 15 minute cities total you know control over you know everyday life they want digital ids yeah but now we also have blackrock jumping in on the bitcoin bandwagon and also by the way collapses crises what do these have to do with major changes in finance oh yeah that's right a lot of these crises lead to resets and over here blackrock is preparing for a potential 35 trillion dollar us debt crisis by backing bitcoin with the Fed's recent 0.5% rate cut, BlackRock predicts rising institutional interest in Bitcoin as a hedge against the dollar's instability. Why is BlackRock pushing uh, Bitcoin so heavily? Well, let's talk about this, right? So here we have most people aren't capable of thinking for themselves. They want a leader to show them the way. Larry Fink is that guy, CEO of BlackRock. He wants crypto regulations and tokenization more than you do. It's about weaponizing tokenization to force their political agendas that so few can comprehend. Check this out. I said, these are just start stepping right. stones towards tokenization. And I, I really do believe this is where we're going to be going. We have the technology to tokenize today. If you want to talk about, think about this. If you had a tokenized right. security and you have a tokenized identity, right. you, Andrew, the moment you buy or sell an instrument, it's known. It's on a general ledger right. that is all created together. Um, you want to talk about issues around money laundering and all that. This eliminates all corruption by having a tokenized system. They said these are just so they're pushing for a tokenized system, tokenized ID. Hmm. That's very interesting as well. Now, also, what 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 did we just get? What did we just get from Jeremy Allaire? Oh, yeah, that's right. So the co-founder and CEO of Circle, October 11th, closing in on a bill that can pass both chambers and reach the president's desk in December. What a victory for the U.S. to take the dollar forward into the age of the Internet. All right. So now we are starting to see the plan unfold. And within this, we could see that the administration on a stablecoin resolution, and they say that they are close to a deal. Given the AML concerns of the administration, as well as continued concerns from Treasury about the systemic risk that digital assets might eventually pose to the larger financial system, there seems to be a shared interest in getting a regulatory framework to the president for signature sometime this year. Big shout to Smoke Dog for this, by the way. With the start of 2024, regulatory enforcement actions in the digital asset space continue to be a priority for several government agencies. Ah, oh, I wonder why. I wonder why that is. Um, so we are nearing a debt crisis. We are nearing a you know point of unsustainability in the overall economy. While we are now starting to see stablecoins become a very big focus, we see BlackRock jumping in on tokenization, pushing tokenization forward. And oh, did we forget the fact that BlackRock has been funding digital ID technology for so long? This goes back to August of 2022. BlackRock finances ID now to identify uh, provider or identity uh, provider. Sorry. And then also, 2023, January, digital ID investments are active. BlackRock boost allocation in one span. So BlackRock is pushing heavily for tokenized IDs, tokenization. They're now pushing Bitcoin ahead. They're really pumping Bitcoin. But why? Well, let's take a look at this clip as well from Whitney Webb. Um, and I, you know, um, for people that aren't familiar, I would encourage them to look up the work of uh, John Titus. Um, about the going direct reset, where essentially before there was a financial crisis related to COVID um, in late 2019, uh, BlackRock created this plan that it was that pitched it pitched to the central bankers at the T Jackson Hole meeting in 2019 about going direct. And basically, the idea was 
during the next crisis, let's QE again, but instead of giving the QE money to public entities, let's give it straight to the private banks. Um, and uh, that's essentially what happened. And one of the people that received those funds, those emergency funds that were meant for Main Street was BlackRock, and they used it to buy shares in their own ETFs instead of bailing out the people whose governments, or sorry, whose businesses uh, were forced to close as part of government policy. And so really, uh, this is um, one of the key reasons why you saw an unprecedented wealth transfer happen during COVID. And this plan wasn't implemented as soon as COVID started. They actually started when the repo market started to go haywire at the end of 2019 yeah. and used COVID as the excuse to ramp it up. So, you know, Larry Fink's involvement in that and also his involvement in the 2008 financial crisis, for example, these same people at Wall Street, um, of, when there's a crisis, affect these massive wealth transfers that take, you know, money from regular Americans to the very top who are now richer than ever, especially after COVID. And, you know, regardless of who wins in November, when this debt crisis comes home to roost, that's what's going to happen. And I think they're going to use that as well to saddle the American people with surveillable, programmable money. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's more likely if Kamala gets in, it'll be a CBDC. Um, and, but it, it seems quite clear that if Trump gets in, it will be a you know a private bank digital currency, or um, you know some of these private bank issued stable coins or tokenized deposits and things like that, which again are just as, as surveillable and programmable as stable coins. And maybe it will be framed as a win, but a win for what really? You know. So they are manufacturing a massive reset through the collapse of the economy. We already know that BlackRock has been a part of almost every single crisis so far. And every single time, they constantly get wealthier while the retail sector gets screwed over. Now, why are they pushing Bitcoin so heavily? Well, let's take a quick look at this, right? So now that BlackRock does hold, you know, roughly 2% of the supply... They also hold the largest percentage stake in the largest Bitcoin mining companies out there. Marathon, Core, Riot, even CleanSpark. Guys, look at the top institutional holders. Yeah, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, the big three. Also, Core, BlackRock, Vanguard. State Street isn't on this one, but BlackRock is there. Riot, huh, Vanguard, BlackRock. Even State Street's on this one, too. Then we also have, oh, and by the way, real quick, JP Morgan's on here as well, but, you know, JP Morgan hates Bitcoin, right? Also, Clean Spark. Again, if we actually look at this, we have BlackRock, Vanguard, and also State Street. What about MicroStrategy? You know, the big player. You have Sailor going out there, pushing Bitcoin so heavily. Vanguard, BlackRock. State Street. It's very clear that BlackRock has a very big hand to play in crypto. It's not just about, you know, Bitcoin, but you also have Circle. And by the way, with Circle also being a big player behind, you know, these tokenized funds and even a lot of the Bitcoin transfers as well, it's clear that BlackRock has now infiltrated this space in such a large way to gain complete control. And I want to play this last clip. This is three minutes long, talking about just how significant this is when it comes to the future of Bitcoin and even crypto. Well, I think it depends on on what um, happens with regulation and, and moving forward. Ultimately, um, I think it's been made very clear by the people that like it and the trad traditional financial system now. Uh, that they only like it if it's you know used as digital gold and not as something transactable. They don't want to transact with it. Uh, they want it to be something that's held and uh, again is a, is for asset storage really, um, and that it's a digital asset that that it's never a digital currency. And I think um, you know we would be naive to underestimate um, them. You know maybe they're acting like they're on you know the team of regular <laughs> Bitcoiners right now, but I I definitely don't think that's true. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of efforts to centralize it as much as it can be and uh, control the on and off ramps as much as possible um, and, you know, uh, potentially make efforts to criminalize efforts to put privacy on Bitcoin. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it honestly depends with a lot of the decisions that are made going forward, um, but I would definitely... Uh, 
want people to be more vigilant as opposed to being like, oh, as long as these people li like Bitcoin, we have won and Bitcoin will fix this and we can sit back and relax and just wait for things to happen. Right. Um, you know, I think that's kind of uh, QAnon-esque and I don't think that's, uh, yeah, I think that's exactly what people like Larry Fink would like us to do uh, ultimately. Um, and so if you want um, it to be those things and want it to be a currency and be transactable um, and be able to challenge some of these efforts to yeah. centralize it and surveil it, then efforts need, need to be, you know, you need to be very proactive about making that a reality. Yeah. Um, no, that's a and, and pushing back against it. And I think an important time to do that is now before there are regulations, before the system is, is in place, uh, the, the system that the establishment would like to put in place in the, the place um, it wants Bitcoin to hold, um, yeah. you know, in their in their system. Um, obviously, that's going to be a system that benefits them a lot more than it benefits the rest of us. It's important to keep in mind that people like Larry Fink have very overtly said that markets don't like uh, democracies. They like totalitarian governments. So this is a guy that is not about promoting your financial freedom or anyone's financial freedom. This is someone that likes top-down uh, centralized control to reduce risk in markets in which he trades and is active uh, for so he can, you know, uh, make more profit for his shareholders, which are, you know, multi-billionaires and other people like that. So, um, and of course, Sphinx in that category as well. So, you know, to trust these people, um, I think would be very naive. And I think, um, you know, maybe there is hope of some sort of Trojan horse functionality there at some point later on, but not if people don't, mm -hmm. aren't thinking about that the whole time and thinking about how they'll affect those changes um, later on. And this is exactly what I mean by trusting BlackRock with this, right? You have these big players like BlackRock, which it feels like everyone just forgot who BlackRock really is. Once they stepped on the scene and started to, you know, push their their uh, Bitcoin ETF, everyone's just like, all right, well, yeah, we forgot who uh, BlackRock is. This is very bullish for, for Bitcoin. This is very bullish for crypto. It's not. They're pushing an agenda that is still for CBDCs, they still want control. And when you mix Bitcoin into the agenda, it feels as though this is setting the stage for a surveillable currency. They want you parked into Bitcoin. They want to be the largest custodian of Bitcoin. Uh, they want total control. And it's all to push this same narrative. Even as you look at Circle, even as you look at the World Economic Forum, all of this is tied together. Why do you think that BlackRock wants you locked in on only Bitcoin, only Ethereum? They keep pushing Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's because they don't want you to actually benefit at all from the tokenization uh, game that they're pushing now. Um, they don't want you parked into assets that are going to grow significantly. They want you parked in dinosaurs in the space. Again, it's altcoins. It's assets that they control. They will only push what they control and what's not going to make you money, I say this constantly, these are elites. They got to the point where they are not by making you wealthy, but by making themselves wealthier. Make sure that you are awake to what's happening here. BlackRock is going to shock everyone when the real plan comes out. And the real plan is centered out on a stable coin that is a CBDC for the United States. And we know that this has always been a part of the plan BlackRock has been pushing this since, you know, going all the way back to 2022, especially the same. You got to you got to think about this, right? This is back in 2022, the same year that we get executive order 14067 to push the U.S. forward on digital innovation, utilizing a CBDC or even digital currencies, a.k.a. stable coins. It's very clear on where we're headed. It's very, very clear. And by the way, they keep pushing that. Bitcoin is a safe asset when we start to see major crises happen. But if you go back to 2020, Bitcoin was correlated to the stock market. And if we are thinking about this logically, if we are about to see a massive you know, crisis hit and stocks you know, drop, they crash, what do you think happens to Bitcoin? Oh, but guess what? It doesn't affect BlackRock because everyone will still be locked in on those ETFs. They'll probably be selling, making BlackRock even richer. 
Stay focused on the target here and wake up to what's happening. They are taking control of this space to push the agenda, the agenda of the World Economic Forum, the agenda of complete control through digital IDs that BlackRock is also financing. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.